Welcome to Books on Air, the podcast you really don't want to miss. I'm Suzanne Harris, and today you'll get a sneak peek behind the scenes at what it's like to be an author. You're going to hear the backstory behind the book, who or what inspires the author, maybe even where their ideas come from, and who knows? You might even get the inside scoop on a new project. If you want to know more about them and their work, then we'll tell you where to find them on social media. Joining me today is Brian Tong, and he's here to talk about his book, Verdict Justice. Brian is a practicing attorney who holds five college degrees. He practices law full-time as a board-certified trial lawyer, and he's also a master barbecue judge, an amateur gourmet, gourmet chef, a red wine snob, as well as being a golf and college football fan. He is an adjunct assistant professor at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University Worldwide Campus. Wow, Brian, you are a renaissance man. Welcome to Books on Air. Thank you. You know... It's my pleasure. Oh, I, I can't wait to talk to you. You're such an interesting person. It it always seems to me that there's a backstory behind every writer. Some writers start writing as children. Some writers, there's a spark that's recognized by a teacher or a professor, and they're encouraged. Sometimes people wait until they retire to start writing. Some people write because... a there's some seminal event that happens in their lives and they feel like they have to share it. So what's the story behind Brian Tong starting to write and when was it? Well, it's, it's, it goes back to, uh, I started practicing law in 1983 here in, here in Florida. And, uh, I had a, a big verdict in a case back in 1992 and it was a very interesting case, and many, many people said, boy, you ought to write a book about that. And so I thought about it, and it kind of started writing in my head. Um, I've been an avid book reader uh, since I was in high school. I had a, a teacher named Doc Carlin who made us an American literature teacher that made us read uh, several books like Catcher in the Rye and Grapes of Wrath and Dune uh, and one flew over the cuckoo's nest. I can still remember those. And we're talking from 10th grade. So I started reading vociferously back then. Um, and one thing my father always taught me was never stop learning. So I've always been a, a reader. I've read probably 5,000 novels myself. Uh, and I know that because about every time I get a thousand of them together, I donate them to charity so and I've done that five times so I've been a reader all my life and um, went to college got a degree went to law school got a degree started practicing and then continued after that I've gotten a master's and two PhDs since then so I'm continue to study and um, so I've always been a reader and then somebody said hey why don't you write a book about that verdict that was really interesting so I started writing it back in probably 95 and every now and then I'd write a chapter and, and then I'd go five years and stuff would accumulate in my head and I wouldn't write at all. And then I'd pick up a pen and or a computer and add a few chapters. And and it was really something, it was just something that I was, that I worked on in my spare time just for fun. And, um, but then it started getting close to being finished and I, I met uh, an author by the name of Randy Wayne White who is from West Florida and who writes about a guy named Doc Ford and his books are very interesting. And he was doing a book signing here in Daytona and I ran into him and we had some things in common and I got talking to him about my book and said, yeah, I've been writing a book for about 20 years, but I haven't, haven't really gotten up the, the ambition to finish it. And he said, well, you need to finish it because your your brain will never let it go until you finish it. So what you need to do is set aside an hour a week every week that you're going to just write that book and you'd be surprised before long it'll be finished so i took mr white's advice and i started writing an hour a week and the next thing you know i finished the book so that was a couple of years ago and then i went through the editing process and the publishing process and now it's available on hardback or paperback and it's 
it's an interesting story and it's one that is all based on true true things that happen in my life and I've changed the names of the players to you know protect the innocent as they say but <laughs> for the most part everything in it um, happened in one way or another so the main so, character Brandon go. Michaels is you pretty much based on me yep that would be it and then uh, the the main person in the story is a real person and there was a real case that happened and and then there's other cases thrown throughout I mean the, the story is basically about a small-time practicing lawyer like myself who does all kinds of different things and there's some there's some some smaller cases in there that I describe some of the facts and a lot of them really happened and some of them I exaggerate for purposes of entertainment and others are pretty much the way they happen so and there's a few characters in there that are that are based on real people and there's a few that are fictitious but for the most part you know it's it's all based on stuff that's happened uh, in my life over the last 20 some years it's funny because when i when i finished the book um and sent it off to to the editors uh, one of the first things they came back to me was you know there's this part in here where he he he's in his truck and he he has no ability to make a phone call why didn't he just use his cell and i, and I was like well to be honest with you when i wrote that chapter there was no such thing as a cell phone so i better i better go back and fix that <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, let's get, yeah, you know, give the listeners phone booths anymore. Give the listeners an overview of the story because it it really just pulls you in immediately when you start to read the book. The the story is about a a young man who was a, a ball player who who played for a, a Florida school. He was an incredible athlete, a pitcher, both played pitcher and quarterback, and. um he was visiting uh, Daytona, visiting his girlfriend, who was about to graduate from uh, from college down here. And he got into an altercation, basically, where a gang of guys decided that uh, they needed to whip his butt. And um, he got basically uh, went to seek refuge at the local campus, one of the local college campuses, and. Uh, the the security there was nowhere to be found on a night when they should have been, and he ended up getting a grievous career-ending injury, a comp- compound fracture of his ankle, uh, was never able to play sports again, lost a, basically a, a shoe-in career in the, in the uh, National Baseball, Major League Baseball. He was already being recruited to, to pitch for the Chicago Cubs, and... Um, lost his basically his professional athlete career as a result of this injury and then the lawsuit that ensued uh, was against the local a local college and um it's all about the case and it's how it progressed and the people that that testified and all the players and then the trial itself and then along the way there's other cases interspersed in there as the lawyer goes through practice and he, like me, is also a pilot, so there's some flying stories and there's some skydiving stories and there's a there's a little bit of a love story and it's funny, it's dramatic, it's interesting, and it's unlike any other book you've ever read, I think. It sounds, it really does sound interesting. And when I first read I, the first part of it, I always try to read parts of the book if I can't get the whole thing. When I first started to read the book, I had this feeling that this was real. It's just so funny because I I had no idea when I first started reading the first few pages that the book was a real incident. And yet the way that you have written those introductory chapters reaches out and sort of grabs the reader by the lapels, if you will, and pulls them right into the book. And you can just see your your verbiage and your your prose is very good and you're very descriptive. It really does pull the reader right in. Did you learn anything about yourself going through this long process of writing a book? Um I learned that um, you know, I'm one of the, I guess one of the things that, you know, not being a, a, a trained professional writer, I learned, actually, I learned a lot in the editing process, I think, because, 
you know, when you're telling a story, um, you and when you're writing a book and telling a story, you're, you you need to keep it in the same voice. Um, so, in other words, if you're if you're speaking in the first person and you're telling the story as one of the characters, then you need to keep the story coming out of the mouth or mind of that character. And I had a habit of drifting away and letting other characters tell the story in the middle of it and and so I had to I had to train myself and edit the book to to stay on focus and and to keep it all coming from the same the same voice. So that was one of the things I learned was that you know you just when you write a story you can't just tell it from 40 different points of view. You have to keep it from the point of view of of one person, either the author or the protagonist so to speak. So I learned a lot about how to write a book, although it was it was a long process. It was um, you know it was a lot of work, and I I don't. It was a story that had been in my head for so long that I just needed to get it out and and get it published. I didn't really do it to to make money. I did it just because I wanted to tell a story and see if I could do it. And so once I did it, it's kind of like been there, done that. Now I'm on to other things, and um, I don't anticipate ever doing and writing another one unless I get stricken by some huge story that I feel compelled to put on paper again but it was uh you know been there done that I've got the t-shirt now I'm looking for something else to do so well I'm sure that there are people who are listening to us right now who are saying to themselves wait a minute I have a story I have a book would you have any advice for somebody that is a maybe aspiring or a considering to be an author um, well, it's, you know, it's, it's not, I mean, now that I've done it and I've, I've spent probably $20,000 having this thing put together between the editing, the packaging, um, the cover design, you know, I mean, there's, there's just a real lot to it. Um, and so I would say if you really feel like you want to write a book, you need to feel strongly about it because it's going to be expensive. And then you need to just dedicate time to to writing it, you know, pick an hour a day or pick pick an hour a week even. I mean, if you just stay consistent and keep it flowing, then it'll happen before you know it. So, you know, the thing with authors, I'm like I said, I've read so many books and I have so many I could talk to you about favorite favorite authors and favorite books, you know, all day long and one of the things that you'll see even from guys like John Grisham who when people ask me what the book's about, I say, well, it's kind of like a Grisham legal uh, thriller. It's uh, it's all about a legal case and the lawyers involved and and all the the goings on. But and everybody knows John Grisham, but you know he has to publish a book every year to to stay, you know, keep his publishers happy. And and every author that uh, that I read, it seems like, you know, they come out with a new book every year and that would be a lot of pressure to me to have to write a new book every year. So, um, you know, the girl, what was that book? Uh, the girl with the spider tattoo written by the guy from Sweden or right. the dragon, the girl, the dragon, with the dragon tattoo. something, the girl with yeah, the dragon tattoo. Right. Yep. That was <laughs> that guy. He wrote, he wrote three books before he ever, published any of them and actually he died before he finished the third one so he never saw his work published but i always think you know if i was really going to write a series a book with a series like uh like i love jack reacher those stories um and that author writes a new book every year there's a new one comes out every year and that's a pretty tough schedule to write a 300 page book and have it edited and published within 12 months but so if you're if you really want to be a writer, you know, be ready for a concentrated career of um dedicated work because it's it's not as easy as you'd think. What's well, interesting, I've interviewed I have no idea how many fiction writers. There's a there's a certain brain thing that happens with fiction writers and they don't have most of them don't have trouble coming up with the plot for a book a year. It's really interesting. And one of the things that they'll say to me is that the characters just come to them. And the characters will come to them and 